Next, we are going to hear from Solomon Hikes about the future of Linux containers. Hey everyone, does this mean I have 10 minutes? I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm Solomon. I work at DotCloud. Um, so we, we're a platform as a service provider. We, we deploy people's web apps and databases, make sure they stay scaled, and take care of complicated things like failover, uh, monitoring, etc. And um, I want to talk about Linux containers because that's what we use, uh, you know, under the hood. And I would say, for one hacker who comes to us and say, "Hey, here's my web app. Run it for me. I don't want to take care of it," another hacker comes to us and say, "Hey, actually, uh, this sounds really cool. I don't want to give you guys any money. I want to do it myself. How do you do it?" And we say, "Linux containers is this open source thing." And they're like, "Okay, thanks." They go check it out, and then, you know, the next day they come back. They're like, "Yeah, that sounds really hard. Actually, you know, could you give me like that low-level piece you guys use to do this magical thing?" Uh, and we say. No, uh, not <laughs> not because we don't want to. Because uh, DocLot is actually this pretty complicated platform behind the scenes. There's a hundred or so quadruple extra large instances, which we break down into Linux containers. We move those containers around, um, and so it's very tight to the way we do things, the way you're, you know, the way we build your web app, the way we do load balancing, all sorts of things. Um, but we always thought it would be cool to be able to say yes, to be able to say, here's our low-level piece. You can do Linux containers with this and go build you know, whatever you want, build your platform. Uh, and so that's what we're doing. Uh, oh, this is a little drawing I put in because that's really what containers are. They are self-contained units of software that you can deliver on a server over there, a server over here, from your laptop to EC2 to your bare metal giant mega server. It'll run the same way, right? Because it's isolated at the process level, uh, it has it, and it has its own file system. So. We've been working on open sourcing that, and we haven't shown it to anyone. We're going to probably announce it, you know, open the floodgates in a, in a couple of weeks. We have a few people from the outside, 40 or so people outside of .cloud playing with it already. And I thought, hey, why not give a little sneak peek here? So this is actually the first time we show anything outside of the .cloud office. So it's probably going to blow up on me. Uh, but anyway, if you're interested, uh, probably I'm going to get cut short before the end. So just come see me. We'll be in the in the lobby over there. So what Docker does, it's, it's a little daemon you drop on the server, any server that has a Linux, uh, a Linux kernel that's modern enough. And it runs processes for you, but it runs them in a way that they're super isolated like I described. So the first thing you can do, can you guys read this? All right, so I can check if anything's running, and nothing's running. Um, and then I, can, I want to run something, so this is really confusing. Um, the way it works is you run a command, like, you know, uh, echo hello world, except you want to run it in something because you want that container run to be repeatable, so you start from a known file system state. You start from a file system image. So I'm missing something here. First, I need to check what images I have. I have two images. One's called base, and that's like a standard uh, Ubuntu base image. And one is BusyBox. If you guys know that, it's a really, really tiny uh, image, which I downloaded from a tarball. Uh, so if I want to run uh, echo hello world in BusyBox, and I want, by default, it'll run in the background. So I'll just say dash A attach. So what had just happened here is it generated a new LXC container, allocated a new file system, file system for it, mounted a rewrite layer, allocated a network interface, set an IP for it, set up NATing for it, uh, and then executed a process in there, captured its output, and printed it to me. So that was all. <laughs> I can do it a bunch of times. Uh, so each of those Hello Worlds actually runs in this container as described. Um, obviously, nothing's running because it exited, but there's a history of everything that has been run. You can see I've been playing a lot. Um, and you can also do this for long-running demons, right? So for example, uh, introducing the lamest demon in the world. Does this work? Should work. I'm all right, and I'm going to run this in the background, right? So it gives me a unique ID for this container, uh, which I can then, you know, I can check if it's running. Okay, it seems to be running. I apologize that the screen's a little too small. And I can say, hey, what's the output of this process over there so far? Oh, it looks like it's saying, oh, wow. Looks like I can't spell. But other than that, <laughs> it's doing interesting stuff, right? Um, I can attach to it in real time. 
uh, and I'm out of time, so I'm gonna have to continue the demo if someone's interested. Attach to it in real time, it'll stream it to me, all the, all the things you'd expect. Uh, and I didn't get to the point where you can see live the changes to the file system as stuff happens and then checkpoint that into a new image within seconds and then run a new process, which you can then automate so you can script things like building an application, right? That would be build a process, snapshot, build, run Thank another process. You. Anyway, I'm done. Very much. <laughs> Solomon Hikes. Solomon Hikes, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Solomon.